Okay, everyone. Um, people were asking me on uh, the uh, my comment site that um, how to have a person you know, pick something up and put it down, or pick something up and throw it. Uh, so I'm going to do this in light wave. I'm going to do one in Blender. Um, let me do the light one wave one first. So here's an animation I did of a knight picking up an axe and throwing it. Now you know this is not the world's greatest animation. I literally did this animation in like about a half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. So don't expect anything great. But he picks it up and he throws it. Okay, again, the speed of the axe needs to be different and stuff. But as you can see, let's just watch it one more time and just notice how you know the axe sticks to the hand and rotates correctly and stuff. And uh, anyway, okay, again. The animation needs work, but that's not the point of this. It was just for a tutorial. But uh, let's take a look at this. And here's the animation inside of Lightwave. And uh, the, in order to get the axe to be picked up, attached to the hand, and then released uh, from the hand when it's time to throw it, it was actually pretty easy. I, I went ahead and I started animating this guy. And uh, I just went ahead. All you have to do is um, select the object that you want parented. Uh, hit M for motion options. And under your modifier, there's this thing called um, okay, dynamic parent. Where are you? Parenter. All right. When you select Parenter, this option will come available. Okay. Well, let's just leave this little window up here. It's very simple to uh, to use. Let's go ahead and let's delete all these just for the purposes of demonstration. All right. So when we want the uh, object to be picked up, we just go ahead and scrub through until we get to the point of the animation where the hand goes and grabs it. All right, so let's say it's about frame 19 here. Well, it looks about like 18. All right. And then we just simply click on Parent. And then we can choose the parent that we want. In this case, it was the left hand. So you just go ahead and choose the bone for that parent, left hand right there. And then here's the options. You should check mark, uh, keep initial initial position, uh, rotation, and scale, and and don't mess with this IK thing unless you're doing something specific with the IK. And just hit OK. All right. So now when we go ahead and scrub through, you'll see that the object is parented to that um, thing until you s go ahead and say uh, unparent it. So let's go ahead to frame 99 here. When he goes to release it, and we will just say unparent, okay? And then you'll see here it's it'll say um, it's parented to nothing, and it says baked. So you'll see it, it created some keyframes for you. It created keyframes of the position, the rotation of the object at that point, and then from there um, on, I, I just went ahead and, and set a keyframe for the object just um, flying off, okay? So now you can see that we have basically uh, recreated the animation that we just did. All right. It was as simple as that, just using that parenter uh, plugin. There's another way of doing this. Sometimes the parenter thing uh, can get kind of screwy. Oh, you could also go in, if you don't want to use the parenter, I'll remove that, you can go in and you can set these um, uh, constraints uh, for the rotation and the position and stuff manually. Uh, it's it's a bit uh, more complicated. Maybe you want the rotation to be controlled by something different or whatever. But uh, I think parenter is fine for for most instances. Uh, but sometimes you if you have complex motions going on, there's a whole bunch of things going on at once. Uh, maybe you know something like the parenter is is not working for some reason. There's another trick you can do. So in this case, it's the knight is doing the same motion, uh, but what I did was I, I took the axe and I duplicated it. You can just select the object and just go to clone, all right, and, and tell it the number of objects to clone. Then I went ahead and I parented the, one of the clone uh, axes to the guy's hand, all right. So what we can do is, let's say we want the uh, the axe to um, kind of. What you're basically going to do is swap out one axe for another at a certain frame. So let's say at frame 99, all right, we're just going to move this axe into place so that at this frame here, 
this axe and the other axe are in, in the same position. Now, I'm not going to try to get this to be exact because I don't have time on YouTube. I've got like basically a 10-minute limit here. So I'm just going to kind of sort of get it into place. What you could do if you wanted to make it exact is copy the um, location and the rotation down here in the little corner here. You can, you can copy the, uh, uh, all the attributes and just select the original object and then just copy and, and, and paste the, the data from one object to another so that they're exactly aligned. All right. But in this case, all right, uh, I've got this one object here, and it's getting ready to, okay, let me go ahead and create a keyframe for this at frame zero. At the same time, I'll hit uh, enter, and I'll say create a motion key, and this time I'll create it at frame zero. So basically, I'm creating the same keyframe on frame zero and frame 91, all right? And then I'll go ahead and animate this axe moving off into the distance here, all right? Let's create this as, okay, well, I don't have that uh, plugin installed, but basically, um, there we go. We don't get that drifting, okay. So um, the problem is, of course, that you can see this other axe at the same time. So what you can do is go into the properties for this object, and you can just go under render. You can go and animate the object's dissolve value. But click on this little envelope here. All right. So we just uh, scrub over to frame 98. And we set a keyframe for this object dissolve. OK. And on frame 99. We change that value. Okay. Actually, it's backwards. Bring up P for properties, go into the clip map, and select these guys. These guys will be at frame 100. I'll set my curve type to be linear. Zoom in on this a little bit. All right, set that one to be free at zero. All right, make sure that everything is set from okay, from 100 to zero. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. And now you'll see that that cop that duplicated axe only appears at that certain frame. All right, so let's go over this again. We just hit P for properties, went to the render tab, we went to the object dissolve, and we have the object dissolve set to 100% for over the course of the animation where the axe is going to be invisible. And then on the next frame, we just uh, set the value to zero so that it instantly kind of pops on there. All right, so now what we have to do is, the, pro the other problem we have is that the other axe that's in his hand is still visible. All right, so let's copy this data. All right, I'm going to copy this um, this animation curve here, and I'm going to paste it onto this axe. So we'll hit P, go to our object dissolve, right click on the axe dissolve channel, and say paste. Okay. All right. Uh, and now we just need to reverse this curve. So I'll just go ahead and select these and give these a value of 0. And I'll select this one and give this a value of 100. So now it's basically exact, the exact opposite uh, effect. OK, so now when we go ahead and do this, now you're going to see a pop because we didn't have these uh, these two axes exactly aligned. If they're not exactly precisely in the exact same place, when the opacity changes and one becomes visible and the other one becomes uh, invisible, you'll see kind of like a pop. But uh, in your real animation, you would, of course, take the time to make sure that they're in the exact same spot at the exact same time. So 
but when it's really quick like this you actually don't see it let me select his body so that you don't see the outline of the axe okay okay so it, it's basically the same effect uh, in in a way it's just done in a different in a different manner so maybe for for some reason you can't use the parenter plugin or you don't want to you can use this simple uh, idea of copying one copying the object and then um, fading one object in while you fade the other object out over the course of one frame and it basically becomes so instantaneous that the mind can't tell the difference as you can see actually just just by just placing that axe manually it's really hard to tell actually unless you're really going frame by frame where the handoff is between one axe and the other all right so next time I'll show you how to do this in blender um, there's actually uh, you know a different methodology but it's actually quite powerful the way you can do it in blender so um, I hope that uh, helps you out